This is a summary explanation for the single slit diffraction. If you shine light through a single small slit, then you can get a pattern as shown on the right hand side with a bright white spot in the middle and some dark fringes and some light fringes. Here's an explanation of how to analyze this. First, a wave will come through and it'll go through the opening. And that opening, we're going to use the variable A for the opening because A actually is what's used to stand for the word aperture. And aperture means an opening. Now to look at this, we're going to use the Huygens Fresnel principle, which says that if I have a wave front, I can look at this as a bunch of smaller particles on the wave front, and each one will exert a little wavelet of light, so its own little wave. So here are my particles, I've just picked six of them, and I'm going to look at the light pattern, not going to the middle, because that's just flooding through the opening, but the first fringe, which is actually dark. So all these little spots are going to send light wavelets to the dark fringe. And they're going to be at some angle theta when they do this. Now to analyze this, I'm going to look at the top little particle and one in the middle. That's going to be half the aperture away. So whatever the aperture is, it's halfway away. So I've identified these as ray 1 and ray 2. Well, ray 2 is going to travel farther to reach that top dark spot. And it's going to do by this amount that's black. So that's going to be the path difference. That means I can make a right triangle and use a over 2 as the hypotenuse and I have theta, and then I can find out the length that is the path difference, and that's important because we need to know that for constructive and destructive interference. So for this path difference, since it leads to the destructive part, it's going to be half a wavelength off. So the hypotenuse, a over 2, the aperture over 2, times sine theta is equal to m lambda over 2. Well, the 2's go away, so this becomes a sine theta is equal to m lambda for dark fringes, or the minima, or destructive interference and that uses our order numbers of 1, 2, 3. There's no 0 in this one. Now, the same analysis works for all particles that are along the wave front, not just the two that I've chosen, because if I try one, like say number 3 on the screen, there's another particle somewhere that's 1 half A away from number 3. That would be number 4. And then for number 5, there'd be another one that's 1 half A away, and that would be number 6. So it works for all particles along the screen. All right, let's compare this to the double slit. So the single slit sets up something like this with the path difference going to the single dark slot over there. And this is what we had for the double slit. But look at it for the single slit. For the single slit, what's different is that I'm not going to have a zeroth order. And instead of a maxima, it's a minima. And when I look at the other one, again, no zeroth order. Instead of a minima, it's maxima. So the equation's reversed. OK, let's take a look at what's going on on the screen itself with the intensities. So I've got a little squiggly graph here sideways. And those are the intensities. You can see I got a lot in the middle, and then it drops off real quick along the sides of it. So the central maxima goes from where m is equal to 1 to where m is equal to 1. So because it goes from 1 to 1, it's actually 2LA, and that's the width of the bright spot in the middle. The delta y from the center line, that's the center of the opening that's in the aperture, for dark fringes is ML over A. And you can see here how I'm showing the intensity with each order. There's the first order, second order, and the third order. So that's what, how the intensity drops off. Now one final little piece about this. The delta y between the fringes, between m1 and m2, and between m2 and m3, and m3 and m4, is just uh, lambda l over a, where lambda is the wavelength, l is the length to the screen, and a is the aperture's opening. And all that's measured from the center of the aperture which is the center of the central maxima.